Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and His risen Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Please join me in this responsive call to worship as we gather together in the name of our Lord. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. We welcome you to worship today on this fourth Sunday of Easter. We continue to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the promise of new life that that gives to all of his children. We uh, also recognize today Good Shepherd Sunday. It's the traditional uh, fourth Sunday of Easter where we know about Jesus and learn about Jesus as the shepherd who protects and preserves his flock, of which you are one. So we welcome you to worship this day, uh, whether you're watching on Facebook or you're watching on our website, uh, perhaps live, perhaps later on. We're thankful that you're a part of our worshiping community today. At this time, we extend the peace of Christ to each other which, uh, with our usual uh, greeting. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be and abide with each of you. We invite you to text Christ's peace to a friend at this time, and uh, this would also be a good time if you haven't yet uh, made preparations for the celebration of the Lord's Supper. Uh, this would be a time that you can go and uh, get your bread and your cup, whatever you're going to use for that. Uh, those of you who are new to this, uh, because we can't gather together around this table. We are uh, celebrating the Lord's Supper virtually, so when we get to that point in the worship service later on, we'll invite you to pass the bread and pass the cup following the liturgy in your homes, around your table with your family. So at this time, we continue to worship the Lord. Uh, we're so thankful that Mel and Mary are here. Uh, Mitch and the praise team are taking a well-deserved uh, vacation Sunday, and we're praying that they are blessed in their time of relaxation. And we're so thankful that uh, Mel and Mary uh, agreed to come in today, uh, continuing to practice good social distancing. Here we are, and now... We are thankful for these hymns of praise. He leadeth me, Savior like a shepherd lead us. Let us praise the Lord with these wonderful hymns of praise.
Precious Jesus, precious Jesus. I'm sure many of you were uh, humming or singing along at home, and so we pray you were blessed by hearing those old and familiar and still wonderful uh, hymns that remind us of how Jesus does bless us. Well, today is a day we uh, also remember Jesus as shepherd through Psalm 23. And Psalm 23 is one that is so familiar that uh, it uh, risks sometimes being something that when we hear it, it just goes uh, right past us as if it's too familiar. Not that it probably ever really could be, but the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, or however you learned it, uh, is a great comfort to all of us, especially, especially uh, in these troubled times in which we live. So today, we, uh, partly in response to your uh, answers to our worship survey that we've been taking online, um, we, and we thank you for your participation in that, another video, and so we hope that uh, this video telling of Psalm 23 will bless you, and uh, perhaps you'll want to have your own Bibles open to Psalm 23 and sort of reflect on the verses as you see them uh, in your Bible, as you see them also told on the screen as we enjoy this telling of this beautiful favorite psalm of so many. Amen. I want to uh, take a moment as part of our joys and concerns this morning to uh, thank someone who's been working very tirelessly from home, behind the scenes, Amanda Huerta, our pastoral assistant and children and youth leader. Uh, she's been trying to wear both hats and balance all of that, and she puts all of these PowerPoint presentations uh, together, the video she has to incorporate, and there's a lot of work behind the scenes. So... Um, Maybe you could send Amanda a note of thank you as well. And of course, uh, Jeff, Mary, and Jordan, uh, brought to you by the Justice Family. I think this could be some sort of, uh, you know, future family program that you could put together. But uh, we're thankful that they've been here each of these weeks during the shutdown, uh, trying to manage all of the stresses that come with all of the things that uh, need to be managed for that. So to each of the three of you, thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, several prayer concerns we want to pass along. Uh, Ruth Biggie, one of our homebound pilgrims, uh, is struggling with her health, so we want to be in prayer for Ruth. Uh, she's at Pine Haven, and we want to lift her up in prayer today. We're going to also pray for Janet Moss, 
Uh, she's in a, uh, an assisted living facility that has been exposed to the virus, so uh, so far not in her building, but we want to be in prayer for protection over her and for the workers there. And we're uh, also in prayer for Niles and Harriet Peroni as they have made some important health care decisions for Niles, and we want to be in prayer for him. We continue to be in prayer for uh, Jim Graven and Joel Messner, both of whom are going through cancer therapy, Kathy Reitz and Carla Swart, who are awaiting surgery. Hopefully uh, soon the hospitals will be able to do that again. And, uh, you know, we know that many of you, uh, and just I heard again this morning of another person in our congregation who is now furloughed, uh, will be going on unemployment. These are really hard times, very difficult times. And so our heart goes out to you. And uh, for those uh, of you who are in that situation, we pray that the words you hear here, that in this time of uh, virtual gathering, that you can feel our love for you, our support for you, and I want to say, to whether it's to you or to people you know, we have a deacon's fund. A deacon's fund which is available to help with any of your needs, whether it's for groceries or utilities or whatever it might be. It's money that is sitting there for our members uh, and, and friends of your families who need help. Just let me know, and we'll do a confidential. Uh, the, the deacons will be informed, but it's, they're very good at confidentiality. We'll keep it confidential, and uh, let us help you. Please, please do not struggle through financial difficulties without letting us know. Uh, we also have, uh, next week is Mother's Day, and so I think we have a slide here to uh, remind all of you that next week is Mother's Day, and we're hoping to do a tribute. Uh, Amanda has been gathering photos, and we're doing a little expansion of the Mother's Day idea. It can be a picture of your mother or, or uh, you and your children, but we also want to expand it to any women who are important in your life. So send Amanda um, a photo uh, you, there's uh, different ways to do that. You can uh, find out about that on our website. There, just look for that logo on our website, and uh, she'll, she has all of the instructions right there, or text me, um, and we'll make sure you get that. But is, we're going to put a video to it, and uh, next Sunday we're going to just take a look at all of those uh, women of Hope Church and the people that are important in your lives. So please support this. Uh, Amanda's working very hard on it. We'd love to have great participation. So just take an extra 10 minutes, won't you, and uh, upload or download, whatever the right word would be, a photo, and send it to Amanda. We uh, now will come to the Lord in prayer, and as we do so, I will pray, and then at the conclusion of it, uh, as we do on the first Sunday of every month, we will join together with the words of the Lord's Prayer, and those words will also be on the screen uh, so that you can participate with, uh, at, as we use the words here at Hope Church. Will you please join me in prayer? We pray to you, our Savior, good shepherd that you are, that in these trying times of great testing of our bodies and spirits, that you will, like a shepherd, lead us, that you will open the gates of life to us today. Our minds are led to those who are struggling to see the future of their lives, Ruth and Niles, Lord, open to them the gates of life. We pray for your protection over Janet and Harriet. We think of Tom uh, as well, Tom Hubrex, as he resides in a nursing home. We pray, Lord, for those who are undergoing cancer therapy, Jim and Joel and many others. Lord, we pray for those awaiting surgery and in our congregation, that includes Kathy and Carla. Lord, we pray for uh, those families that are struggling with the fact that they can't touch each other, they can't be with each other. We hear the stories of grandmothers needing to uh, greet their grandchildren through the window of a door or not being able to attend birthday parties. And all of these are such uh, traumatic times, real trauma 
for people because they cannot do the things we're so used to doing that that touch, that presence that gives meaning to our lives. So Lord, help us to know that you, just as you are able to touch us with your spirit, that our spirits can touch each other too. That this will be a time that will pass away eventually, and we'll be able to return to that in some way or another. But until then, Lord, give us the comfort of knowing that through your Spirit, our spirits are able to touch each other. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling with unemployment and furlough, who are not able to uh, know how they're going to make their mortgage payments or their rent payments, uh, are worried about where they're going to find food. We see the long lines around this country of people desperate for food. Lord, we pray that you will help them to know that you are a shepherd who supplies, that you will bring us to the point of the pasture where we will find abundant food and water and life. We pray, Lord, that those who need it will feel that they can take advantage of our deacons fund and the the opportunities for help from a number of other agencies in our community. We pray for those who are struggling with depression and anxiety. We see this working itself out in our society in so many different ways now with uh, physical threats and, and armed conflict. Lord, perhaps these are inevitable, inevitable things in our time. Perhaps uh, as the human spirit feels caged in that it is just uh, our human response of some that they want to lash out. Help us to understand what is driving those emotions. Lord, we pray that you will replace their anger with a sense of calm, that you will replace their bitterness with a sense of hope, Lord, may your church and these communities be uh, an instrument of your peace. We pray, Lord, for the protection of all of those who are uh, struggling to know how to move forward. Protect their minds. Protect their bodies. Protect us, Lord, even now that this health issue has become a politically divisive thing. We pray, Lord, that your church will be one that can bridge the gap between people where there's a a wide political divide. Help us as Christians to speak peace into conflict. We pray all of these things to you, great shepherd, in the words that you taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're thankful for the continued support that you've given uh, us at Hope Church. We're so thankful for your continued support Uh, faithful stewardship, uh, and we like to remind people now a variation on the speech we normally give at this time that if you are struggling financially, you should keep your money for your family. God understands that. When you are blessed with abundance again, then bless us, bless the Lord with your offerings. But You know, you have the grace of God uh, bathed over you. Use what you need for yourselves. If you have uh, something extra and you want to give it to us, you can either send it in by check or you can put us on your automatic pay. You can give online. Thank you for all of you who are giving online. That's been a great blessing to us. The faithful giving we've seen each week, it's growing. So thank you very much. At this time, uh, while the offering is received, we have the blessing of Mel and Mary. And so we uh, invite you, again, those of you who have joined us later, uh, this would be a good time for you to prepare your uh, uh, 
uh, Lord's Supper elements for in just a few minutes after the message. We'll get to that. But now, as you consider the blessings that God has placed on your life, as you pray for blessings into your life, as you offer your gifts to the Lord, we offer you this blessing from Mel and Mary as well. Our gifts will be received.
Good morning, everyone, on this beautiful day. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will strengthen us to be devoted to the teachings of your word, that through it we may hear your voice and follow it into eternal life. Amen. Amen. The scripture today is from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all out, when he has brought all out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech. But the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The Gospel of the Lord. For those of you who are uh, guests in our uh, worship today, uh, that was my wife Jill, and I want to thank her. She has been our uh, shutdown reader, so thank you very much, dear. Uh, I don't know what ultimately this is going to cost me. Uh, probably I'll find out on Mother's Day uh, or Memorial Day weekend when plants are again for sale, but it's all worth it, so thank you, dear. Jill and I are uh, now part of the senior citizens who worry about thieves breaking in crowd. We may or may not have been a uh, part of the uh, citizens who worry about thieves breaking in crowd when we were not old, but uh, now, well, I'm old, she's not, but before we were old, I don't know, we just never budgeted for it or did anything about it, but you know, one of the virtues of getting old is that you start to get these deals, or at least they make them sound like deals, which are marketed to old people through marketing that plays upon all of our fears, which is, what if people break into your house? So, we are now a family that is protected from thieves who would break in by virtue of this system of cameras and buzzers and alarms. We've had it about a year, and thankfully the alarm has never actually gone off so long as we've had it in place, and, and we thank God for that because if the alarm ever did go off, God only knows if I would die from the thief or from the heart attack caused by the alarm. But in any event, the alarm is both a protection but also, in a way, the gate in and out of our house. You can't get into the house uh, if the alarm's on unless we turn it off first. And when you leave the house, you have to turn it on and arm it. And when you get up in the morning, you've got to turn it off so you can leave the house. And it's all this fun stuff. We've told very few uh, people uh, the access code to our house. You have to have a safe word and all this fun stuff. Anyway... Few people need to get in for various things, but uh, you know we don't want to tell too many people uh, because you might mistakenly, if you set off the alarm by mistake, you might mistakenly summon the Elkhart Lake Police Department to sweep up our driveway with sirens blaring and lights flashing from all two cars. And if I get much more bored in this COVID-19 crisis, maybe I'll just have to, you know, trip the alarm just for a little fun for the neighbors. Just kidding. That is a joke. 
That, children, do not try this at home. That was a little joke by Pastor Bill. Do not forward this video to the Elkhart Lake Police Chief. Thank you very much. My point is that if Jesus was telling this parable today, maybe that would be something he would use instead of a sheep pen. But it's sort of the same idea, this shepherd and the gate that Jesus says he is. Jesus draws from an old image from Middle Eastern shepherds, although you see some of this still today in Middle Eastern countries. But there's a sheep pen. And uh, then each family did not have its own uh, sheep pen. The, rather, the uh, shepherd... Uh, would have to go in and there would be all of these sheep from many families gathered in one large pen. But how would the sheep for each particular shepherd know whether to come out? Well, that's what Jesus is using as his illustration here. The shepherd uh, is working into a pen that is surrounded by stone walls, and over the stone walls there are these uh, thickets of uh, branches and, and other things that are put up there so that people are discouraged from climbing over. And then the shepherd uh, himself lies down at the opening, which is the gate, and so that the sheep can't get in, the wolves can't get in, the sheep can't get out, and so forth and so on. So just as we need to turn off our alarm system in the morning, the shepherd, when the shepherd would get up, would move away from the opening so the sheep could go out to pasture. And after they've all come in, after they've all been counted and checked over, the shepherd would lie down before the gate and would know that they are all safely in. But of course this story is a parable, right? It has a meaning other than here are ten tricks of the Middle Eastern Shepherd 101 that you might take in uh, you know, school there in the Middle East. Jesus was not, after all, an actual shepherd. He was a carpenter. The people of Israel are not actual sheep. They're just people like you and me. The religious leaders who opposed Jesus were not shepherds or wolves. They were just poor leaders. They led people away from God's chosen path. So the story, though, even though it's a parable, has survived for thousands of years, generation after generation, because like everything in the Bible, it keeps sounding more and more relevant each time that it gets told. The premise of the story is simple. Not everyone who enters the sheepfold uh, desires what is best for the sheep. They want to devour the sheep. They want to devour the sheep for their own purposes. So the question would be, how do you know who really has the best interests of the sheep in mind? Well, you listen to God. The one who enters the gate is the shepherd. And how does the shepherd get in? The gatekeeper has to allow in the shepherd. So who is the gatekeeper in this story? Jesus doesn't identify uh, who the gatekeeper is, but John Calvin says, well, perhaps it's God. And that makes sense to me, that God himself has arranged that this great shepherd would be allowed in to call in the sheep, to call out the sheep when it's time, that God has allowed Jesus to come into the sheepfold because he is the one who is the one true shepherd. God is the gatekeeper who opens the gate and then the sheep listen to his voice, and he calls out his sheep by name and leads them out. This is, I want you to think on that for a moment. We are waiting to be rescued from death and brought into life. That's the human condition, right? How will we know, though, whom to follow on the pathway into life? Jesus calls us, and not with just some generic, hey, you sheep, follow me. He calls us each by our Christian names, given us at baptism. You know what that, that is, right? When the minister or priest or whomever says, what is the name of this child? And you say what the name of the child is. That becomes their Christian name. That's the name that Jesus knows the child by. That's the name that Jesus calls them out, calls them home. If we recognize his voice, then we know who is the one to follow? Because the sheep don't follow a stranger's voice. There's all sorts of stories about uh, the shepherds who would try to uh, put on the clothing of a shepherd and, and try to mimic their particular calls, but the sheep wouldn't bite, wouldn't take it, wouldn't take the bait, because they would know the true shepherd's voice. And that's what we need to understand as well. 
We need to know, how do you know Jesus' voice, right? You learn what Jesus sounds like when you study His Word. You know what Jesus sounds like when you actually talk to Jesus in prayer. You know what Jesus sounds like when you worship Him because you hear Jesus responding to you. I've been watching some of the responses uh, that come through on Facebook as people talk about their reactions to the worship service. That is... That is your spirit responding to the Spirit of God. That is you hearing Jesus speak. That's the beauty of this, that as you come to know Jesus, you will know who to follow. You know, there's always going to be wolves at the gate to devour our spirits. That's happening right now to all of us. We all feel like someone's after us. And it's this uh, unknown, mysterious something or someone that makes us all feel on edge sneaking up on us, making us weary, causing us to feel ill from despair. The wolves offer destructive options to deal with that worry, to deal with that despair. Because the wolf is not interested in bringing you to safety. The wolf is interested in causing you to give up. And so listen for the voice of Jesus. You know, there's always going to be bad shepherds who offer false promises, even today. Listen carefully to what people are promising. There are false prophets, wolves, trying to get into the sheep pen, even today. Listen, is what they're saying Jesus? Or are they appealing to our inner prejudices? Are they telling us that, no, you don't need to love that neighbor? Friends, wolves still lurk outside the gate. Bad shepherds still lie to get the sheep to follow them. One of the great challenges for parents of every generation, but I think especially now in this social media generation, is for parents to teach their children to seek and recognize the voice of Jesus. When we were raising our children before there were computers, you know, what you mostly had to worry about is after you went to bed at 10 o'clock, that's when your kids would watch television until who knows when, right? And you worried about, oh, what are they watching on TV? Well, now it's a 24-7, 365 problem for you parents. I don't know how you manage it. You're all learning ways to do that. But that's a very important task to understand how you can teach your children about Jesus and Christ's church. That's why you bother with that, right? Because they need to know, they need to be educated how to distinguish the voice of Jesus from that which is false, from that which is destructive, from that which calls them across their devices in an unending stream. I'm not saying they should not be allowed at all. I'm not saying you have to be on social media if you're going to be a part of the world today and in the world they're going to grow up in. All I'm saying is help them know what should be allowed inside the sheepfold and what are the wolves, which are the bad shepherds. Help them learn the voice of Jesus. For the voice of Jesus. Jesus says, I am the gate for the sheep. You see, that's the beauty of it. Jesus lets us in. Jesus protects us from going out. Jesus is the gate, and He calls all who will enter. And Jesus says, whoever enters through me will be saved. John Calvin writes this beautiful commentary. We are already sheep in His heart from the time of our birth. In his heart, before we are born, he writes, Christ declares that they who are called into the order of believers are so firmly bound together that they cannot stray or wander or be carried away by any wind or new doctrine. Look, I know many of you have children about whom you worry. They become adults or, or you're worried about what their path is. Children, grandchildren. I want you to know this. You rest on the promise of baptism because as John Calvin is telling us right here, no matter how far we stray, Jesus finds us. The shepherd is going to save those who have entered in. Even if we are just one of a hundred, you know that story, eventually we will hear the true voice calling and we will return carried on the arms of the loving shepherd if we've been injured on this journey away, if we've been through the thickets and briar patches of life, Jesus is there to anoint our head with healing oil. 
If we return thirsty from having spent too much time in the desert places, Jesus offers a cup overflowing with living water. He lets his sheep in to protect them and preserve them. He lets his sheep out, leading them to abundant life. He does this because he knows, Jesus knows where the waters of life are found, where the bread of life is prepared and waiting, where the cup is filled to overflowing His thirsty and hungry sheep are thirsty no more, are hungry no more. Friends, we retell this uh, Easter, this story during Easter because it is the promise of life in Christ. That's what Easter celebrates, right? Christ died so that we could have life. That is a promise for today and for eternity. Jesus shepherds us through these difficult times of distancing, of job loss, when we face economic uncertainty, as we deal with the burdens created by forced nearness, by forced separation. Jesus is preserving us physically and spiritually for life, for abundant life, by closing and opening the gate at the right time. Jesus is the good shepherd who calls us in through the gate where he protects and preserves us from death and he leads us out through the gate to the pasture which gives abundant life. So friends, today, the good shepherd has turned off the alarm system and flung open wide the gate, inviting us to come to this pasture where he leads us to the finest of bread, the most flavorful of wine, Because that is the goal that He has for each of our lives. That is what Jesus wants for us, that one day soon we will again gather around this table physically together. But we're thankful that today we can gather around so many tables virtually, united by the Spirit, so that we can receive this abundant life together. And that's why we say, beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Holy Supper we're about to celebrate is a feast of remembrance, of communion, of hope. And so I invite you to join me in this communion prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty and everlasting God, with the heavenly host and with the saints of all times and places. We lift up our hearts in joyful praise, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world, in the joy of His resurrection, and in expectation of His coming again, we offer ourselves to You as holy and living sacrifices. Together, we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. The Lord Jesus, the same night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. So often as you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup after they had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. So often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. We invite you at this time, uh, if you are a baptized Christian, to join us virtually around your own tables with your bread, with your cup. And as uh, Mel provides uh, some music for us to reflect to, we invite you to pass the bread. Take a moment to pray that God would fill you up with his bread, would satisfy your thirst with his cup. Friends, come, for all things are ready. The bread of life, the body of Christ, broken for you. The cup of blessing, 
the blood of Christ shed for you. We will join you uh, socially distant here. We each have our own elements that we brought here. And so we now join you and we invite you to join us around the table as we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Thank you for joining us in worship. We announce the blessing and you may then depart in peace. For those of you joining us now for the children's message, that will begin immediately following uh, the departing in peace. And please join us next week for Mother's Day. Invite uh, the women who are in your lives to join us. Uh, if they don't have another church they worship with, and be sure to send your pictures there as well. So, accept God's love. Be confident in your faith and hope and carry the light of the cross. Be a good shepherd for our good shepherd. In Jesus' name, go in peace. Amen. Well, good morning, children. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've been able to already enjoy this beautiful day. Uh, I'm going to just have one little story I want to share with you and then you can get back to enjoying it. So thank you so much for coming today. So I have some things up here I want to show you um, and maybe you'll know what some of these things are. Uh, this is our pet sheep that uh, we keep in our house. No, it's not really. It's just a pretend one. But there he is. And you see what uh, Jesus says, like, you're little sheep, right? You're like the little sheep. And so Jesus provides your food, something to eat, and something to drink. And so your parents give you that. But it's Jesus who says, love your children. And so your parents love you, Jesus loves you, and he takes care of you just like his little sheep. And so the other thing that I have up here... There's two things. Jesus says 
Uh, there's a psalm, Psalm 23. You can ask your mom and dad to read it to you, Psalm 23. But he says your rod, and so this might be like a rod, except that it had nails on the end. And so what that would be would be to get the bad people away, to get the wolves away. Stay away from my sheep. And then he has a staff, kind of looked like this, and it would have a hook on there so that the shepherd could catch the sheep when it was trying to run away before it could get away. But the most fun thing to know about the shepherd is that the shepherd wouldn't just stand there, wouldn't go home at night. The shepherd would be with them all night long. And what the shepherd would do is he would lay down at the gate where the sheep lived so that nobody bad could come and get them. He would be like this, oh, now I'm going to rest, I'm being the gate. And then if anybody came, he could get them. Like if a wolf came, oh no, a wolf, go away, go, 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 go away, go away, go away. That's exactly how it was in Jesus' day. Okay, so remember, Jesus is the good shepherd, you're the sheep, Jesus keeps the bad people and the bad things away, and if you're ever feeling like, oh boy, I'm worried, I don't, I'm afraid of the dark, or whatever it is, remember, Jesus is laying right at the door so no bad things can come and get you. Jesus loves you, so do I. Enjoy the beautiful day. See you next week. Have fun.